first slide right here, our arm care exercise program. We call it our ACE program. All right, it covers rotator cuff, shoulder girdle, elbow, forearm. All right, what works for me at St. John's is uh, I'm by myself, I have two GAs. So I have exercise complexes on laminated cards. I laminate each one of these uh, cards and I'm able to give them out throughout the year to our athletes when they come in. All right, and it, it, it allows me to manage them and almost you know, have another strength coach on board, okay? Um, our level one, there are five different exercise complexes. Within those complexes, anywhere between four and six exercises, all right? I only have a video of one. You've done them before, I'm sure. Um, they're not magic. I, I've taken them all from uh, different PTs and different uh, programs that I've seen, but I put them together into a complex and um, then rated them level one. All right, a level two, three, and four, two different complexes each. All right, anywhere, again, between four and six exercises. The level is determined by the intensity of the exercise complex, okay? It's somewhat subjective, all right? I came up with, all right, I think this is a little bit more dynamic than this one. We're gonna give this one level one, which is most dynamic, and this level two, which is a little less, and this level four, which is real, real easy. Okay. Um, the level is assigned uh, to the athlete based on our daily program and the period in which we're training. So our off-season and our in-season right, um, is going to be different, how we, how we approach it. Uh, off-season in the fall, um, basically what I'll do is it's a variety of, of the complexes assigned or levels assigned, and I'm basically teaching our athletes all the exercises and all the different complexes and what complex goes with what level even though it's on the card, all right? I'll have on the card, I'll show you in a moment, each level with the complexes, but I still want to teach them. Um, in season, all right, basically, uh, I'll assign the level, so I'll either say, all right, today you guys are doing level one, you guys are doing two, you're doing level four, and then within that, I give the players uh, the option of selecting which complex, okay? I want to give them the, the, the ownership, all right? I want them to try to vary it week to week, doesn't always happen that way. Some guys feel comfortable. I'm going to just do, you know, shoulder A, level one, all the time. I like it. Sometimes they do that because they don't remember any of the other stuff. All right, so it's a, a little bit of laziness uh, at times, but mostly they feel more comfortable. I'm fine with that. So I'm going to give them a little bit more uh, uh, ownership. Next, we'll have uh, Love to Tend Up. I don't know if anyone's used it. I love it. Uh, we got five of them now. Um, I want to get a couple more, so I have one for every station. Um, love it. It's a, if you're not, not familiar with it, it's a microcomputer that measures power output and bar speed. We utilize it to maximize power output. Um, the main focus that I look at, I mean, I, I give them numbers, which I'll tell you in a second. It's a great motivational tool. When I tell someone, hey, you're not moving the bar fast enough, they go, coach, I am. The machine says you're not. All right, and, and they get the guys get really pissed off when they can't get the numbers, and they um, they get very um, competitive. The girls that use it for softball, they get depressed when they can't get the numbers, and you got to really build them up. But that's uh, another talk, another time. Um, I'll I'll use it for box squats, clean pulls, deadlifts. The three measures that I'm looking at: peak power in watts. All right, I want week to week. All right, month to month, year to year, I want them to get their best peak value for whatever exercise we're doing. And I'll save their program cards, and I'll kind of compile that number, those, that data, and, and kind of track. Um, it's almost like another way of testing you guys. Um, look at average power in watts, right? I'm looking for, say, we're doing box squats, then they get 90% of their best rep in each set. So I really want them to push hard. And it, it, it's done a great job. Right, instead of guys squatting and moving that bar like really, really slow, they, they come down, they touch, they fire off the box, even with heavy weight. Right, I want them to go heavy. Right, average velocity in meters, square, uh, meters per second. Right, we'll use it on the clean pulls. We want one five or greater. If they can't get one five, all right, I'll tell them to go light. And the guys get pissed off. You know, they want to lift heavy weight. They're going to do their clean pulls. They want to throw on as much weight as possible and they move it really slow. And I try to explain to them that if you move slow, you're going to be slow. All right? So I want them to get one five. And a lot of times it's technique. All right? You guys, you know, I'll have guys way stronger than me, and they say they're doing, I don't know, 135. I come over, bam, one seven. They look at me like, you know, how, how did you do that? 
So they do it every day. It's technique. I'm not any stronger than you. You just got to get your technique down. All right. And uh, a lot of them, you know, have done a great job. Um, pretty much everyone can get some pretty high numbers. If they go one five or one seven, all right, go heavy. All right. So I want them to do, use as heavy weight as they can, and still move at one four five. Um, functional movement screening. I love this. Great cook. Love this stuff. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it's just a method of assessing movement patterns. We're trying to locate that weak link. All right. Yeah, you can be super, super strong, but there's some weak link in, in the chain. You're not going to execute and, and exhibit that power that you could possibly have. There are seven tests. Um, I don't have video of it, but it's an overhead squat, hurdle step, inline lunge, a shoulder mobility test. All right. Basically, it's here, there's a clearing exam. Basically, I have the, the kid put their hand on the shoulder, raise their arm up. They got any pain in there? Boom, right to the trainer. They get a zero score, and they go right to the trainer and have the trainer assess what's going on with that shoulder. And we do it in the fall, so we can kind of, hey, you got a little hot shoulder there, and we could, we could eliminate or minimize our, our exposure to some injury later on down the road, maybe in season, that kid now, that little hot shoulder turns into something worse, and they can't pitch. All right, so we're going to do it right off the bat. Um, active straight leg hamstring, all right, basically measuring hamstring flexibility on the floor, trunk stability push up. All right, there's also a clearing, what's called a clearing exam, where you're doing a cobra stretch and we're looking at any pain in the low back. If there is, boom, right to the trainer. And then a rotary stability test. Um, and if anyone's done this uh, before, the way they assess it, if anyone has an athlete that can do it the way they want you to do, basically it's, say I'm all, all four, I'm not going to be able to do it, but all four and be able to lift your right arm and left leg, uh, right arm and right leg, all right, and stabilize, okay? I haven't had one athlete that can do that, all right? You can't do that, you drop it down, you do opposite, okay? Most can, but you'd be amazed how many can't even stabilize on the opposite side, and these are some great athletes that I'm going to be working with. 